Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Civil Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the curtailment of the bars and the beams. So in this lecture I will show you how we curtail the bars and the beam. Actually, the curtailment of bars is needed in the beam because we want to make our economical structure. We don't, do, we don't provide two extra bars that are not necessary uh, to take the load. But we should make our structure economical and safe structure. And these are the basics requirement of any civil engineering structure that first of all we should do safety and then we should make our structure economical so that's why we curtail our bars in the beams curtailment means to cut off the bars so in this lecture i will show you the curtailment of bars according to the american concrete institute 31814 according to this according to these codes i will show you the curtailment of bars so let's consider uh, this is the beam. You can see here the horizontal member, the flexion member, and these are the two vertical members. These are the columns uh, at the both uh, ends of the beam. So uh, upon loading of this beam, if I take this the line, line consideration of this beam, if I draw the line, and these are the columns, let's suppose. So upon loading on this beam, this in a uniformly distributed load coming from the slave or from the beam, so this beam, uh, like this is the beam and this is the line view of the, this beam. So upon loading, this beam will show deflection, right? And the maximum deflection will be at the, mid, at the mid point of this beam. And here, you will see here, uh, that there is some negative moment. The positive moment will occur at the mid point and the maximum uh, moment will occur uh, at the mid point and there will be positive moment, right? The positive moment is occurring at the at the mid point of the beam and at the uh, you can see at the center of the beam uh, there is positive moment while at the support here at the support of the beams at support in conditions you can see here uh, that there is negative moment occurring at the ends of the beam or you can see at the column there is some negative moments negative moments creates uh, due to the load because it will bend in this way so positive moment will be at the mid of the beam and negative moment will create at the sides of the beam so this is the general overview of the moment diagram. So according to this moment diagram, we place the reinforcement in our beam. The positive moment here occurring at the beam. So what we do, we place the tensile reinforcement here, right? We place the tensile reinforcement in the beam here in this way. Like as, as we can see here, uh, there is no positive moment here at this portion. Or we can see there is no positive moment here at that portion. At this, at this portion of the beam, at this portion of the beam, so there is no need to uh, uh, to place the reinforcement in this portion of the beam, right? So it will be sufficient to place the reinforcement only in this portion, so that to resist the positive bending moment. So that's why we curtail the bars here up to this limit. So what this distance should be? At which uh, from the column, what is the distance that it should be curtailed? So it is L by eight, right? It is L by eight. Similarly, from here, this distance should be L by 8 according to the ACI 31814. And if this is the total length of the beam, L, if this is the total length of the beam, L, so the curtail distance from the both support should be L by 8. Like, for example, if I consider the length of my beam is, uh, let's consider the length of my beam is 10 meter, so L by 8 means, L by 8 means, that uh, 10 by 8 it means 1.25 meter it means I will put my reinforcement here from 1.25 meter right 1.25 meter similarly from here 1.25 meter I will not place the reinforcement here in the column while the two main bars to uh, hold the stirrups should be placed along the uh, beam now coming to the negative reinforcement, as you can see here, the negative reinforcement starts at that portion. So for negative reinforcement, we have to provide the top bars. So top bars are generally provided here, right? Like in this way. Top bars are provided in this way, right? So these are the top bars and they are used for to resist the negative moments. Now, as we can see here, that these bars are also curtailed at this portion. Why? Because you can see here there is no bending moment here no negative bending moment here at this portion the negative bending moment here you can see here there is zero only the positive bending moment here is there 
while negative moment is zero in this portion. So we can see here that there is no need to provide the negative bars or the uh, negative reinforcement at the top of the beam because there is no negative reinforcement. So there is no need to place the steel bars here. The only is to place the negative reinforcement at the ends of the beam. Why? Because the moment is negative here at the supports of the beam. So we will only place the negative bars at the supports. So this distance uh, recommended by the American Concrete Institute is that this distance should be L by 3 of the beam. And this distance should also be equal to L by 3 of the beam. It means that the bar should come out from the column and up to the distance of L by 3 and L by 3. L by 3 means that L by 3, right? If my beam length is 10, so 10 divided by 3, it comes out to be 3.33 meter. So 3.33 meter uh, should be my should be my distance uh, of the reinforcement bar from the column. It should not be exceeded from the L by 3, from the 3.3. Why? Because we want to make our structure economical. Otherwise, our whole structure will be uh, on a higher cost because it's only one beam. If we consider there are thousand beams in a multi-story building, so multiply it with the this length bar, so it will increase our cost of the building. So what we do, we curtail our bars in the beams and the slab as well. So this was, uh, today's lecture was about the curtailment of bars in the beams. I will upload the uh, next video about how to curtail the bars in the column, slabs and footing. Uh, so uh, for today, this was the uh, lecture about the curtailment of the bars in beams. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video.